What's up everyone, Enrique here with another video and this time I'm going to be showing you how I perform live without using a DAW or a laptop or any kind of computer. So let's get into it. Alright, so I have a show later tonight and I should probably be packing this up instead of making a video about it, but I figured what better time to do this than right now when I'm about to pack it up and run you guys through a simple little setup. This setup is, um, I've made it way more complicated than it needs to be, and I'll show you guys what boxes you can trim off so you don't need to spend as much. But yeah, without further ado, let's, uh, let's check this out. All right, guys, so here it is. This is my main setup. Again, I made this way more complicated than it needs to be. You can honestly probably do a live set with just two of these boxes. Maybe not these two, because it might be a little annoying, but it's definitely doable. But in this case, I got these five boxes here. We got the Octatrack, the Digitac, the Circuit, the SP404SX, and the Avalon Baseline. When it comes to this setup, the Octatrack's kind of my main brain. I guess you can say it's the master clock for everything, as well as my mixer. If we look at the color-coded cables, they're all going into the inputs as mono inputs into the Octatrack. I'm not using it as a stereo because that would only limit me to two boxes, where with four inputs, I can have four other additional things on top of the Octatrack. Basically, in this setup, I have the Avalon going into input A, the SP404 going into input B, the Digitac going into C, and the circuit going into D. Track five, six, and seven are acting as through tracks, basically monitoring these signals and passing them through Octatrack sound engine and manipulating them and affecting them to an extent. Track eight is the master channel where I can assign a bunch of different kind of effects to the entire composition. And track one, two, three, and four are kind of set up as these hybrid um, live sampling tracks, as well as taking samples that I've previously recorded on my NPCs and putting them in here to create and further enhance the song that I'm playing live. Quick little rundown of how the MIDI is set up. Basically, I have MIDI out of the Octatrack going into the input of the Digitact just for clock and timing purposes. No MIDI is being sent to it. Then I have the through output going into circuit. Again, just for clock and timing purposes, no actual MIDI data from either of these is being sent to here. I have all those parameters turned off on circuit and then out of circuit into the Avalon baseline for MIDI purposes and MIDI clock purposes. So with this synth one is sending MIDI notes to the Avalon baseline and circuit as a whole is passing the clock from both of these to the Avalon baseline so everything stays perfectly in time. I know this looks like absolute spaghetti. It's only because I had another synth up here that I wanted to take my Oberheim expander. But it started detuning last minute. So I've tried a bunch of different setups and this one ended up working out pretty well. My usual setup usually consists of the Octatrack and the Circuit, but I recently finally decided to get the Digitac and you'll see how I came to that decision uh, up here. So now my set consists of these three and once in a while the SP404 and I decided to have a little fun and bring in the Avalon baseline. I've also done a live set with just the circuit and the SP404 which ended up being really fun and it's a really simple setup and I'll leave a link to that video up here as well that you can check out. The Avalon, of course, it's a 303 clone um, by Abstract Instruments. Super duper good, but the tech support is lacking. I've had an issue with mine for a while now and I've tried contacting them millions of times, different platforms, to no avail. So take it or leave it. Uh, it's a great machine. If you have a bug with it, you're pretty much on your own. Um, that, again, is going into input A. The Digitact here is handling all my drums. And there's one song that I made previously on here at an airport that I thought was really cool that actually has the main sample also. So it's drums and samples for one song. The circuit, it's kind of this Swiss Army knife in this setup. Basically, I have a couple blank sessions that have some synth patches that I've made. For example, this one, right? And uh, always has my same settings, filter, resonance, attack, decay, so. And that's basically in key majority of the time, I hope, with whatever sample I've recorded onto the Octatrack. Synth one of Circuit is actually sending MIDI notes to the Avalon baseline. And why might I do that, you might ask? Basically because the sequencer 
on the Avalon baseline is incredible and it's super awesome and really easy to use. But what it doesn't have is scale mode, which circuit has. So if I just hit record on here and hit the notes on here while it's going, it'll actually record all these notes in scale onto the Avalon sequencer. So to me, that's really cool because if I'm playing perfectly in scale, I can have a really random analog 303 acid -y bass line that's perfectly in scale. The only issue that I have with the Avalon bass line that I mentioned earlier, my little bug, is basically in the manual, it says any notes velocity under 63 sent to the Avalon bass line using an external MIDI controller will not turn on the accent. Well, that isn't the case. All MIDI notes turn on the accent, which I don't always want. I've even tried a ton of different things, sending really low velocity notes, even velocity one to here, and the accent is always turned on. If you guys have the same issue and have figured out what I'm doing wrong, leave it down in the comments below because I would really like to figure that out. The SP404, which I have barely out of frame over here, is basically a send and return effects box for whatever is coming into the Octatrack, AKA everything. So in order to achieve that, I'm sending the Q output as a mono signal out of Octatrack into the SP404. And then the output of the SP404 as a mono output into input B of the Octatrack using just this one cable, basically. Octatrack has this really cool feature in the personalized menu where if you cue a track, it'll actually mute it from the master track and send it to just the cue outputs. But where I kind of trick it is that because I sent it to the Q output, which is the SP404, it's coming back in into input B, which is track five. So to explain this a little better, cause it can be a little confusing. I'm gonna go to a blank session and just program in some simple little uh, drum beat. Let's just do this. Right. And that's coming in on track six. If I cue it, it's now coming into the SP404 where I can start affecting it, right? So watch this. I can catch something and then take it out of the queue and have it come back in here while I still affect this. So to me, that's a really fun alternative to kind of having some variation when it comes to playing live. Going back to the session I had a second ago, basically in the mixer section, I have synth one turned all the way down and muted because it's only strictly sending MIDI notes to here as I play them, not as a sequence, just playing the notes into its sequence. Synth two, volume up, unmuted. Drum one, here's a little secret on circuit. If you turn down the volume of drum one, but leave it unmuted, the sidechain will still work for the synthesizer. So again, let me just put this into practice. The drum is hitting, but you can hear it's being sidechained. It's kind of like a ghost kick that you would add in Ableton's compressor. So that's a pretty fun trick to use. So in this song here that I've loosely prepared, I try not to prepare the songs too much because I like to have the improvisational feel live, but I do like to have a couple things as backups. In this track here, if I press play, all the drums, random stuff, acid line, effects box, and a loop that I've previously recorded on my MPC 60. So if I press, oh, actually the MPC 4000. So that's on track four. If I start turning that up, Right? Synth two is pretty much in scale. I can just hit record. Where it's cool is I can actually send that to the SP. or I can send the, S, the circuit and the Digitact to the SP404. So now they're both queued, so check this out. Maybe just bring in back just the drums and leave circuits still there. So then check this out, turn that off. I can then go to Synth 1, which is sending MIDI notes to the Avalon in scale with the rest of the song. So if I hit record, you'll see that's recording and then then just turn that up. Right? 
Maybe I don't like that. I can just clear it out. Hit record again. Again, that weird bug, I gotta go in and turn off the accents on each step. Live, this sucks, but it works. Again, send the uh, digitact. And then take the drums out. And that basically just stops it there. I go to a blank pattern here so I can turn that off and not hear anything. Really simple setup. Again, more complicated than it needs to be, but pretty manageable, which is cool. Got a bunch of different patterns in here. So I go to this one, which is just like no clap. some cool little effects. Really simple. Got little effects here, like some filter on the uh, on the loop. But yeah, for the most part, that's pretty much it. Again, you can do this setup with just like two of these. I can even record these acid lines that I have here into the Octatrack and prep them later so I don't even need to bring this. Same with the circuit. And the SP404, complete overkill. Like you don't need that. I just have it for that one effect really in this entire set that I have going on. Once in a while I'll use the vinyl simulation which is really cool, but for the most part, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can again do this with just two of these for the most part and yeah, have a ton of fun with it. Uh, I want to keep this video nice and short. It might be a little longer than expected just because I got to make it to this show tonight. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. If you guys really like this video, I would appreciate it if you left a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and let me know in the comments below how I can make these videos better for you. You guys can always follow me on my Instagram where I post similar videos to this as well as other videos with other gear in my studio and there might be a piece of gear in there that you want to see a video on. So hit me up on there and let me know about it. If you guys have any questions about this setup, leave them in the comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But without further ado, you guys know what to do and that's to share the love, share the knowledge, knowledge is power, peace.